Today, we'll be painting some big effects on some very small pieces. These are the little pieces that we'll be painting this time. They were constructed in the last video, so if you're interested in seeing a little bit of scratch building, please check out that video. So to start things off, I found these great examples of old wooden boxes with chip paint and exposed wood. These are great references. I'm just going to give everything a little spray of this dark color. It's mostly just to hide all that white styrene so it doesn't show through later on. But at the same time, this also gives a nice foundation for the acrylic colors that I'll be using later. So now we're getting down to business. These are the colors I'll be using for chipping, and I'm adding them onto my wet palette. If you haven't used a wet palette before, I really suggest you give it a shot. They're great for keeping your paints workable for extended periods of time. I add a few drops of water to thin the paints, but for chipping, you really want to keep the paints a little bit on the thick side. This will help give your chips nice, crisp edges. The palette also makes it super convenient when blending colors. I think we have everything we need to begin. These first brush strokes, they're always the hardest. It's like looking at that blank piece of paper where you're hesitant because you don't quite know what to do or how to get started. As I ease into it, I use very light brush strokes. It's almost like sketching just to start building my confidence and mapping out where I want to go. The brush I'm using is a round number zero. This has become my go-to brush for this type of work over the last few models. But really what's most important for a brush when doing this type of work is the tip. Those numbers are really just a basic indicator of how much paint the brush can hold. But no matter what size, if it has a bad tip, it's just not going to work for you. By now, I'm a lot more comfortable. I've found the rhythm and doing chipping is just, well, it's just pure joy. It's a lot of fun. It's certainly easy to get carried away, but remember to try to maintain balance, even restraint when adding chips. Up until now, all this work has been done using acrylic paints, but there always becomes this point where I just feel like I need a little bit more or something a little bit different, something just to push it a little bit further. It's at this point that I find myself switching over to oil paints. Oils just bring so much richness and depth to the finish. I begin by just adding a darker brown into areas where I'd like a little more definition or shadows, such as underneath the lip of the lid here, and also along the bottom. And this will help tie it into the ground work a little bit better. I'm going to add some of this ghost gray to the wooden planks, kind of a grayish green color. My thought here is, is that that lighter green gray color will help fade out the olive green base, just to help the box look a little bit more aged and, and worn looking. By now, I'm sure you've picked up on the pattern. It really is just a matter of adding some color, blending it back, adding some color, and then blending it back. Just small little incremental refinements until you finally get the piece to where you have it in your mind that you want it to be. And finally, I add just a hint of wash brown, a reddish brown color, to a few places where that exposed wood is showing through just to give them a little bit of warmth and personality. And with that, we're done. And here's a nice little beauty shot of our box. Moving right along, next up are those recoil blocks for the artillery gun. Once again, if you're interested in the construction of these, please visit my last video. These are small little pieces and I don't feel like spending a lot of time fussing about. So I just down and dirty mix the paints directly into the cup. About 70% thinner, 30% paint. Plug the end of the nozzle. Let the bubbles do the mixing. And just that quick, I'm ready to go. 
The base color is airbrushed onto the little blocks and we're ready to start painting. You can see I've wasted no time in jumping straight back into the using the oils. There's really no need to do a lot of fancy brush painting with the acrylics on these. They're so small. What I'm really trying to do is just bring out the wood texture that I put into these blocks and then just overall make them weathered and grimy as if they were working in the dirt and the mud, which of course they were. As you could tell, I'm repeating a lot of the same processes and even the same colors as I had done on the wooden box. This is that same wash brown color. Just adding a little bit of paint and then blending it back into the finish. I like the way the wash brown makes the whole piece look a little bit more grimy and well used. It's important to keep in mind that very little thinner is used throughout this entire process. The oils are being applied directly from the palette to the part and then blended back using a clean, soft brush. This all means that the paints dry very, very quickly. Well, relatively quickly. Still working with oils here. Weathered wooden blocks. A little tricky to say, but easy to do. The last parts to be painted are these thatch walls. And if I'm being quite honest, these really aren't that interesting. So I'll be quick. The most important thing here was really just to make sure that I had all the white styrene covered up with the base color. It was a little bit tricky with that weave pattern, making sure I got all the spaces in between. Next, I added some colors onto my wet palette. And from there, I started to pick out the individual thatches or the weaves. I don't know which is which. Uh, of the fencing. Just giving it some highlights and some definition. This is a little bit of a longer process, so I won't bore you with the whole thing. And here's how they turned out, all ready to place into our scene. And with that, I think we're gonna call this video a wrap. All of this will start coming together in the next video, where we'll be working on the base. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe button. That really helps. And also take a look at the links below for the products used throughout this video. Take care. Talk to you soon.